All right. Hello, everyone. I'll just start sharing my screen and one I'll minute, one you. minute there. I go live. One minute. I told you. Okay. 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 We are alive. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Tripti. I'll be starting with my presentation. I'll introduce myself. I hope everyone is fine. So just let me start with my presentation. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Tripti Desai from India. So today I will be discussing about a very interesting topic that is introduction to fashion law because I think fashion is something that everyone craves to know. Even the young minds, the students, they all tend to, you know, they're very curious to understand the concept of fashion law. Then why actually are we studying the course fashion law? Because sometimes it seems very glamorous, though it is very glamorous, but there is nitty gritties of fashion law that we will discuss ahead with my presentation. So before I start, I will be discussing about IAU. So now, IIU, what is IIU? So International Internship University, it is one of the leading virtual education system that perform a global brand confederation and which is one of the most valuable and trusted worldwide. And it's well reputed in delivering the innovative programs. You know, globally, it is trusted name for quality training programs and it's committed to provide better and virtual education to all young learners of the globe. So the main agenda, or I can say the main aim of IAU is to provide the best of quality of education to the virtual platform to all the young minds sitting across the world. So in a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder. Mr. Piyush Pandit Sur, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various school and cultural backgrounds. So this was a brief about IIU because they are working really hard to promote, to deliver the best to the students and giving the best of qualities. So now with this, I would like to start with my topic of discussion today, which is what is fashion law? So let's begin understanding the concept of fashion law. So when we hear the word fashion, what comes to our mind? You know, being a girl, being a boy. In our daily lives, we are used to fashion. We want to look trendy. We, we choose the attire, you know. We try to accessorize ourselves. This is all fashion, but can it be legalized? I mean, like, is there any law behind if you have any issues in the fashion industry? Yes, of course, my dear. We have a very solid law that is fashion law. So now moving ahead to discuss what is fashion law. Fashion law is a specific field of law, you know, that deals with legal issues that impact the fashion industry. Fundamental issues in fashion law include intellectual property, you know, the business and the finance with subcategories ranging from employment and labor law to real estate and international trade and government regulation. So sometimes we have, we have, we have seen, we have like, we have a lot of law firms in India. So we have a lot of fashion industries, you know, big retail industries, apparel industries. So sometimes they also have an issue. So the, the point of concern lies behind is like where to approach, how to deal with these kind of issues. So now moving ahead, this is a brief background about fashion. So it's a law, field of law that deals specifically all the legal issues that a person is facing in the fashion industries. Maybe it can be an actor, maybe it can be a designer, model, art industrialist, anyone. So now moving ahead. Okay, so now when we talk about this very fashion law, we also call it April law. Fashion law is also termed as an April law that has evolved in today's fast-paced society and has become a part of one of the individual personality. The life journey is like you know, the clothing industry is the origination to the brand recognition, all forms of a part of the fashion law. So now again, when we talk about fashion law, 
the question that comes to our mind is that actually if somebody want to pursue a career in the fashion industry being a lawyer or the law students who want to develop their skills and go ahead with this kind of innovative law that is fashion law what can be done more with this term it's not just a only terminology that i'm discussing it's something that you can build a huge career also so when i talk about fashion lawyer so now the thought of the question that rises to my mind is that what does a fashion lawyer do if i became a fashion lawyer certainly after in a few few days a few time of a few years of work so now what is my work what is my motto what will i do these kind of thoughts just cross my mind so now to describe a bit actually you know fashion lawyer performs a broad range of duties you know ranging from forming and dissolving business entities also and sometimes they tend to advise on you know brand development you know ip monetization that i will be discussing ahead and franchising you know talk about merchandising advertising and protection the main concern is protection over here and negotiating with the contracts involved in arbitration litigation trademark copyright and other you know ipr issues so looking into the export and import matters also related to the fashion industry now so these are the basic agenda or the basic aim of fashion lawyer so mainly when we talk about fashion law ip has to play a great role ip is a part you know so now india does not recognize a particular fashion law therefore in order to protect the right such as invention rights data rights and product rights etc can be either through availing civil remedies like injunction or under several ipr laws fashion attorneys draft and negotiate contracts that i discussed right now acknowledge and trademark and copyright for their clients and represent their clients in litigation involving ipr issues you know sometimes the people suffer a lot so now when we talk about if i want to design a fashion law course or in a very layman language what does it include so now going ahead i'll be discussing this very famous case study that is ritika private limited versus biba private limited in india so before that when i talk about the fashion law course so now what is this fashion law course so now fashion law course you know actually give us an overview or we can say a kind of glimpse about fashion industry which is an emerging arena of legal especially that you know carry forward that you know covers legal issues relating to every component of the fashion fashion fraternity in india and across the globe and the world you know the courts actually try to concentrate on the very key assets of the industry based legal issues you know from a practical point of view you know like protection of your brand through different typologies of ipr rights and also international filing and creation of domain name you know that can be used to protect the fashion creation and models like biva biva is a brand puma is a brand right zara is a brand i mean these are the fashion brands that we actually tend to are very associated with all these kind of brands so now fashion business through the fashion you know negotiation and specific agreement for the industry these all things are taught when we talk about fashion law course you know counterfeiting issues are also there from the product liabilities or the consumer protection you know role of ethics and the initiatives that is taken by the current brand industry across the globe so actually you know the kind of course that we design to implement and develop and teach the students are regularly you know supplemented uh, with some kind of practical cases you know to manage lawyers of the fashion industry and also you know various case study method that makes the teaching and learning more you know uh, complementary with each other and easy to understand so you know anybody can do this course you know it's it designed basically for the graduate law students also and even the practicing lawyers who wish to learn the fundamentals of fashion and luxury industries they can just go ahead with the course it's not something that you know if you are only studying law so you have to just only go with the basic traditional norms and the subjects you know fashion has also meaning to it so being a lawyer you can just excel in that if you really know about it So now I'll be discussing about Rutika Private Limited versus Biba April Private Limited. It's a very famous case study. So now what happened in this? Ritu Kumar is a brand that tried to protect its design under the brand name Biba. You can see the images in my slides for the reference. You know. So now Ritu Kumar is one of the famous brand that tries to protect the designs under the brand name Biba. He she argued that some of its former employees had gone to work for the well-known brand. So now 
what is well known brand so when we talk about well known trademark or well known brand is something that is known by people since ages since long you know that has a brand value in the eyes of the customer in the market so now what happened the defendant argued that under section 152 of the copyright act 1957 you know if a design is registered under the design act then it's not subject to the copyright you know if a design is not registered under the design act but is competent of being registered then once the copyright in a design is applied to an article by industrial process for more than 50 times the ownership of the copyright ceases so now design so you had to register your design under the design act that is very important call that one has to take you cannot miss on it because of the decision the court had to decide if a design that is included under the copyright act is liable to be covered by it or if under section 152 of the act and is capable of being licensed under the design act it would not be protected on the grounds that since design fall under section 15 you know to they could be registered under you know either act by applying for a license from either legislature so now this is a point that we have to take care it's very important because you cannot miss on the design act or the copyright because they play a great role so you need to understand the basic concept behind when you try to understand the concept of fashion law right so now because see if you are not able to understand about you know fashion law we are not able to just discuss it in the names so now moving ahead okay the moving ahead now fashion is one of the factors in social industry that affects you know every cultural understanding that there is a requirement for regulating it right so now what happened is that we know you know anybody can go ahead with this so we have certain remedies also that is available in brand and product counterfeiting that is injunction damages of compensation so now fashion is an art form and such it is dependent on the designer's imagination and idea that is exclusivity it's a very tactic you know used by any sort of brand and a company you know in this market to cater a snobbish class of people so now also so these are the basic fundamentals when we talk about fashion law so now what happened is that there are various sometimes people tend to ask me also being an academician that okay ma'am that they have a certain interest they want to write more about fashion law they want to read more about fashion law so where can they write about fashion law or where they can you know study about fashion law so now i would just say that you know you can have you have various journals you know you have various journals where you can just write yourself exclusive publications on fashion law Uh, you know you have some re recently announcement also that course aiming to address the legal issues in fashion industry so what happened is that fashion law is a very promising you know a uh, field as a new fashion business that are coming up you know and the earlier ones are looking for the expansion also so you know these days the apparel and textile industry is the second largest sector to be very honest the apparel industry is the second largest you know sector you know that after the agriculture they generate you know they try to have a massive employment and also they contribute a good amount to the nation's gdp you know mega textile parks have been already you know been announced by the union government these days in the recent union budget also to double the industry because you cannot cut you cannot just separate it has to grow in the market also so now to address the legal issues of this industry specialized lawyers are required practicing in the field of exclusive in the field of fashion law so now fashion law actually also gives you know is designed for the students to provide with the most up to date i could say the practical information which sets the most benchmarks for the industry expertise and also the most important areas of legal framework and perspective in the fashion and luxury industry you know starting with a brief overview of the industry they include you know legal compliance of the fashion brands also you know so now the fashion industry has been exploding with the better and no novel inventions and works of an art that indian legal system has an ip ecosystem also which is becoming more systematic and proliferated so also you know we should focus on all major stages of the fashion life cycle also you know that promote applied framework to the fashion and luxury industry because fashion is something we are all stick to it whether we are young we are kids we are you know 
grown up see all are somewhere lying and make ourselves attached with this kind of apple industry because every nowadays we have a lot of trendy attire we, we try to be like okay you know whenever you see some of the models or whenever you visit some of the new store or some of the fashion store so you are trying to you know the things are very appealing to your eyes you feel like oh wow i want this kind of dress okay i really like that so it tries to appeal yourself appeal your eyes so something which is very appealing grab the attention of the customers and the people also but later on sometime it might happen people may copy your design as well suppose if i am launching one piece of mine or if i am launching a lehenga with my brand name that is bushins or thrifty sometime it happen that people try to copy the exact design and they prolificate and share in the market with the other name so you have certain legal issues with that also so now ipr so intellectual property and fashion law it's very related so now ipr has been very justified throughout the history through the lockean idea of a natural right so hegel individual ownership of property also there's incentive for innovation so when you invent something you have the incentive so i'll give you a very brief example suppose when you are working for a competition in a law school or anywhere or even even in a school in a childhood so your teacher must tell you that she must be telling you that okay fine if you do this work uh, rightly if you score 100 out of 100 you would be getting a chocolate from my side because when you are working hard you will be getting an incentive so now when you are innovating something even in the fashion industry or an ip you have to have an incentive that will give you a most um, let's you know motive to work ahead in life and to contribute more to the industry so now what happened you know those who are interested to have an understanding in the field of fashion law or to understand the legal issues in the fashion industry or you know want to make a career in fashion law i would suggest one should go ahead with the, you know understanding of nitty gritty of fashion law you know so yeah various journals also like i discuss about you know fashion law journal that is that will be starting and you can just you know write and submit your paper there also right so now because fashion industry will only grow it won't cut back you know you had you will see it's more developing so you know actually what will happen fashion lawyers will be you know in charge of you know forming they try to dissolve the business entities and you know advertise every time so because we know that fashion law is growing it's growing across the globe so this is an upcoming area of opportunities you know for everybody for young lawyers for young students as fashion never dies you know because which there is a need to protect the right of design and i feel the brand equity and many other legal concerns are there that has to be taken in mind so when we talk about the fashion foundation of india when we talk about the concept that lies in india i would say it's a newly constituted body that consists of designers also who seek protection of you know ip intellectual rights and there were few legislations you know that protect the regime of fashion and april also so with my presentation of today you will get to have an idea about the basic glimpse of what is fashion law how to go about what can we do more if we want to be a fashion lawyer so when we talk about again if i talk about in very brief the counterfeiting part so when we we know that the counterfeiting part is on the rise you know in the fashion industry also so a comprehensive course you know concentrating on the fashion industry is the real need of an hour you know and it also opens a lot of opportunity me being a female understands very well the fashion and it is not something that will keep on diminishing but it will actually expand so it opens opportunities towards creating new careers also in the fashion law you know the responsibilities of for a lawyer could range from you know requiring a starting a new fashion house also you know they can do that you know provide legal advices to various brand they can consult you know import and export also so you just need to focus that what you have to do you need to have an idea first of all that how to go about what is you know actual work that what a fashion lawyer does right so moving ahead okay so now these are the various terms that you need to understand that is fashion design council of india that is fdci you have ffi that is fashion foundation of india so these are the various foundations of india that is fashion law encompasses like ipr business finance international trade you know counterfeiting and fashion uh, law litigation that you need to understand so it's a part of it now moving ahead you have civil rights consumer culture privacy technology labor laws and trust so now the fan fashion foundation of india that is ffi which is comprised of leading indian designers aims to defend ip rights from a very wide spread you know they you will actually have an idea so now what happened is that moving ahead with this okay so now what is the basic problem you know 
what is the basic problem that lies with the current protection in fashion law right so now we know that fashion industry is a very dynamic it's very wide you know to to stay connected or to stay afloat you need to keep up with the changing trends you need to match up with that you know because fashion law is something that will give you a new insight also every time there will be sudden change right so there would be certain ads that may pass an incumbrance because of how time is consuming it is now you know fashion law is tremendously growing in india if i talk about india so now it it is a it's not a central piece of legislation but that govern the subject you know when the real of fashion is considered you know because it has an interest in the indian legal fraternity also because there are a lot of services that is provided by the fraternities and people are exploring a lot so now the fashion industry if i talk on if i talk about in india has a very long and rich history you know dating back into a very ancient times you know before i discuss this i had you know the word industry also had even a very uh, faced economic glossy kind of a meaning you know following uh, independence you know the there was a fashion scene of india that saw a very meteoric rise in its growth uh thanking to the economic liberalization in the early 1990s which brought a very much needed foreign investment to the industry and exposed the indian public to a very global fashion trends you know that keep on the making the rest of the world fit and take notice of the diversified so now again we have a problem of knock offs also so now what is knock off so like i'll give you a very example with my presentation like we take example of local kanchipuram saree that is an artisan work of india so whose work is copied by the larger fashion houses and sold on a wider scale so now the local it's a very problematic system that lies with the local handloom what should they do so now the local handloom creators often lack the resources to secure the ip protection because they do not have any idea and they do not know how to approach where to go so additionally for the local creators a small loss in income could result you know in the entire business also that is shutting down because they cannot compete with the premium fashion houses these days you know so now to expand that we need to have some kind of protection also and legislation also so now when we talk about fashion law again i could say it's an amalgamation of various laws that is contract law employment laws or uh, consumer protection law but more importantly ip that we are discussing also which can it's, it's a major tenet or we could say that major facet of fashion law which can be regarded as the pillar of fashion law so when you know, when we talk about this feel and experiences you know the kind of boom that the fashion industry did you know is doing actually brought a lot of change and they are working to protect the industry and legally with through ip they are creating a cycle they are creating the rights that could be used by the people and protect their design also so you know there were various ip creators if i know who would actually previously felt you know very helpless you know in the face of you know colossal counterfeit also that is happening these in the market so you know it manufactures like to become aware of the legal rights and accordingly to take necessary steps to protect the interest also so you know what happened is that when we saw to fight you know when we have certain doubts in our mind so now where the debate lies so uh, my main agenda of discussing this topic you know in front of you people and to bring to the knowledge about the basic integrities of fashion law because it's just it's not just a word that we try to keep and escape about but it's more than that so now the debate what i feel is regarding uh, the fine line between the inspiration and piracy that reaches on in the fashion world you know in such a contentious you know climate it's it's far too important you know for the various entities also to understand about the industry to have the clear understanding of you know the laws that protect them because both from the piracy aspect as well you know and the copyright the design act as well because you need to register your design as well under the design act so you know we know that while fashion law in india not very without the shortcomings you know they have by no means reached a very state of completeness i feel so the the industry continues to grow also so now the moving ahead with this the problem that we have seen uh now what happened in the pandemic zone so we all know that the entire country country was in the boom you know pandemic lockdown it was all shut so what was happening what was in the mind of the people who were working in the fashion industry so now fashion photography and all the kind of promotional activities such as you know fashion shows for the fashion industry's operation with the advent of pandemic you know everyone is very confined to the four walls of the home that is very true because me you know myself is an academician and we know that 
we cannot go to the college universities we cannot teach everything was all virtual for time we cannot step out of the house so now in this scenario what is happening so now the fashion industry has risen to the new challenge you know when it talk about novelty and in inventive ways with the remote photo shoots now of course because people cannot sit idle because they had to earn there is, there is livelihood about that so you need to work whether you are working in the four walls at your house or you are stepping out so now unluckily during pandemic none of us can move out so we have the source of income that is left with us to work in a remote zone and create something very you know designable very inventive that is actually appreciated also you know the first in the foremost question that arises when thinking about such collaborative efforts is like copyright law and the authorship and that lies in the pre pandemic era you know while such a position has you know excited at least such a debate it seems more pertinent and very considering that what is happening so now what happened is that you know because our industry try to grow so new laws will be introduced also so you need to replace the older ones and revise the new one you know because a major sign of i feel increasing interest in the fashion law uh, from across the legal industry and academic spectrum you know actually started way back in 2011 that i could sense it was since long but with later with the year we try to develop it so now when the new york you know bar of association established the fashion law committee you know to study and comment on a wide range of legal issues that is associated with the fashion industries now you know over the years what i realized is that you know these kind of flcs have been promoted the discussion and myself with an ip expert and i have an area in fashion so the discussion in education of the fashion law among the law firms also as well as you know if i talk about the fashion business and have organized the panel discussion various sort of you know webinars so that to uh, you know encourage people and to give a insight even the lockdown also so that people can be aware about the fashion industry so now today also uh, you know several laws institute you know offer, offer courses and you know programs in the field of fashion law but in india it, they are very few the very few domain that they're still offering a full time fledged course so you know among the advocates as i talk the stronger and the more complete fashion law in india it's a primary uh, one part i would say that is Uh, FDCI, that is Fashion Design Council of India. You know, that's the non-profit organization in India, actually that promotes the business of fashion in India, and work towards it with a sustainable growth. You know, it organizes several prestigious, you know, events, including the biannual India Fashion Week and the Indian Court Week. So now, what happened is that the council tried to collaborate also with the Indian government, that is the textile ministry, if I know the commerce and industry. to help and improve the landscape of the fashion industry in the country and organize events and provide some kind of initiative for everybody also so now this is my conclusion if i give a set of conclusions for the pandemic zone i could say that so that there are the recent developments that is happening in fashion industry they have drawn attention from an academic standpoint so now what happened is that in india if i talk with my perspective the key laws that try to regulate and protect is the only design act 2000 the gi you know with the existence of these many laws may suggest a very comprehensive system you know that is in place to protect the design you know that is not always the case furthermore the you know we can say there's some kind of inconsistency that actually correlates between these kind of acts uh, which actually often and lead to the perplexing scenarios you know at the best so uh, if i talk about this section 15 of copyright act they they had very two main key provisions that we have to keep in mind when we are reading uh, you know in the perspective of fashion law so you know copyright protection you know under the copyright act and the registration of design under the design act you know cannot coexist that is you know the design must either be protected as an you know artistic work or we can say uh, that can be registered under the design act so design can be anything design can be of a box it can be a packaging right so given a design uh, that is very protected under the copyright act that can be registered under the design act but it's not registered so because you know if the said design is reproduced again you know more than 50 times by anybody or industrial process by the copyright owner or the any or any other person under the license from the owner then the protection of the design will cease to exist now again if i talk about again you know what happened we discussed the one case that is ritika private this ritu kumar versus biba april so you have seen what happened in this case 
So now under the design app, also if I give you a brief, what are the features? What does it include? It includes you know shape, uh, configuration or pattern or any kind of ornament or composition or lines of colors you know that try to apply to any article, whether in two dimensional or three dimensional or in both forms. So we know that this brand called Zara, you know Zara is one of the most uh, you know spread. You know we try to you know Zara offers a lot of good clothing. We try to buy. you know caps dresses shorts tops so it's it's one of the most leading right now in the industry so of course they also need some time protection right because it's there are very high chances that people can copy the design and they can just actually reproduce and sell it in the market by the by the different name you know so but what happened is that design that actually prohibits you know few things that i would say is not a new and original if it has been publicly disclosed anywhere like if you have any design and if it has been disclosed in the eyes of public prior hand it won't be registrable you know it it you know it won't so you have to make sure you know it should be comprises and contains it should not contain any scandalous and obscene matter also so what happened is that you know suppose once if i have a design you know i registered so i am the owner of a design you know so now when the owner of a design is granted copyright you know in the design you know for 10 years from the date of registration which may be extended you know for the second part up to 5 years so now it is secured so now also we can say that the information that i am delivering or i could i am discussing right now the design act is perhaps the one of the most relevant it's one of the most uh, relevant in the industry in india which is not far from the truth you know from any commercial uh, fashion designer it would be very financially viable for them to you know protect uh, their design it is very important for everybody you know we are belonging to a era that we are all into fashion zone we try to you know sometime copy our favorite actors also you know we try to copy our favorite actors that you know okay fine i have to wear this kind of design i have to have this kind of clothes you know i need to have this kind of shoes i need to have this kind of jewelry so these are the fashion perspective that we try to follow right so now lastly if i talk about a uh, gi that is geographical indications you know that are primarily used to protect products that are based on their geog you know geographic origin also you know within the domain of fashion so now what happened is that you know within the domain of fashion it is applied basically you know handicraft work is included like you know we can talk about tamil nadu that is kullu shawl of assam or kandangini saree in india that famous in tamil nadu you know mysore silk so these fall under these category of gi also so provisions under this act <coughs> you know actually tries to help and protect you know the indigenous indigenous you know creations and lot of population that are suffering a lot like uh, you know i was re reading something way back so uh, i just got to know there's a designer in punjab uh, who cannot claim to produce a chanderi saree you know which are produced in the chanderi town of madhya pradesh also in mp so now again the question of gi was there so now these gi are combined with these very similar laws in the other countries to protect these products in international trade so however what happened is that now the question that arises again we have discussed this earlier again the knock off thing what that is actually happening so now what happened the big fashion houses in india or everywhere you know they may be able to protect ip in their own ways in their own products by having access to the you know resources but the same cannot be you know said about the local designers because they are to suffer i mean they, they are not very well versed you know i would say they do not know the legal tenets and aspects and that's why i would suggest that one should no about the basic because still people think that there is nothing much to do there is no scope in fashion law no there is lot of scope when you try to know it's not always arbitration it's not always criminal law it's not always ip it's not always tort and contract that you can study but also you can have a great career ahead in life being a fashion lawyer you know being a fashion advisor you know so you have scope but you need to understand the nitty gritty first that what is actually the word fashion law understand because whenever you try to know somebody someone or something you need to understand the basics of fashion law right so now what happened is that another issue is also with the respect to the commodities so now what happened is that now you have understood the basic of fashion law so now it's evolving we all know that we need to identify also and implement relevant laws that are growing 
So now while countries like France and the USA are ahead in regulating fashion laws in India, they're not very quite focusing on the same. So FDCI is also one part, you know, that is playing a great role. So fashion fraternity, both the elite class and the, you know, the small players, they face a lot. So now what happened in the well-known, you know, social media accounts, like we say that died or Sabbia is an Instagram handle or the other vigilant shoppers, you know, they have been highlighting lot of glaring issues and examples of design piracy also in India fashion world. So what happened? Piracy can happen at any stage of time. It's not always in the fashion world, but when it like when we talk about cyber law, so we have piracy. So now it, it can happen in the fashion industry as well. Right. So now while the protection offered by current lawyer is laws is not complete in any sense, you know, that does not mean fashion designers should you know, disregard what limits protection, you know, they are afforded as doing wood, you know. So advocating for the better protection, you know, while making full use of the legal tools at your dis disposal to protect, you know, what you can create is the smart thing to do for anyone working in the fashion industry. So this is something, this was a hinge that I tried to bring it out uh, to give a very clear picture about the fashion law the fashion industry. So now we also know that, uh, you know, people try to have two, you know, choices that, okay, should we go ahead? Should we have any degree about it? Should, how we can do that? How can we pursue this course? So you need to understand, you know, there are a lot of universities that offered various courses on fashion law. So now what happened is that you can apply, you can see, you know, there are various post diploma courses also that are coming these days, you know? So you can actually, go through that you can actually do that course you can read about it because unless and until you try to read about something you won't have a clear idea so you need to understand first the topic in brief and then you can go ahead and pursue never never try to you know have caution in mind key fine if i go ahead i mean what will happen is it fine or not unless and until you are not well versed with the subject you cannot define so i would suggest people who are very interested in fashion law they should understand it they should try to you know evolve to try to grow and develop their habit of reading the article which is written on fashion law or something related to fashion industry also right so now what happened is that this is all about the today's discussion that i try to bring it on in front of you so now also you know what i have seen if i talk about you know there are various copycat versions also you know there are a lot of people you know emerging in public you know they try to have an original design concept and further, they try to copy the same and they, they showcase in the market that it's their own. Right. So now what happens is that now discipline is very important in any field, I feel, you know. So the discipline entails, which means that the legal issues, you know, that actually comes. There are many issues, you know, when you are a criminal lawyer or when you are a, you know, when you're a litigator. So you try to face a lot of issues by the people. They try to approach you, you know, your client, and you try to handle them in the presence of code you try to sort that issue right so you are working as a lawyer so similarly here also in the legal industry in the in the fashion industry it's not that just a glamorous world that you're just seeing the model walking down the ramp or just having a fascinating or a very bold design clothes so it's just not limited to that fashion glamorous bold but there is more to it so there is cherry in the top but there is also a discourse to it so every side has a pro and cons when you study so also a fashion law when you talk to, when you try to understand the fashion industry, you also have a pro and you also have a con. So, you know, they, they are very, they, you also have a responsibilities and I would say duties of fashion lawyer, you know. You need to understand, you need to understand the luxury, the footwear, the jewelry and, you know, the kind of brand, the textile, April. So, you need to understand first about these also, the cosmetic industry, you know. So, there are wide range of services, you know, they're expected by the young fashion lawyers, you know, if they are working in this field. So you can always explore. So you can you can be an you know advisor, you know, in the kind of brand, you know, when you when you talk about branding and merchandising, because see, promotion is something that we have been doing a lot. So whenever you whenever you see, suppose you are having a Kisan gem or whenever you are buying something from Zara or you are having something from Puma or Pantaloon. So these are big brands, right? Or Gucci. So now why you buy? Why you go for these brands? Because you have an idea, you have heard about it, right? You have been fascinated immense because you know, okay, fine, these are the top brand. Okay, fine, this is luxury brand. And, you know, it, it, it's because you have an idea in the mindset that people are buying, people are loving, and I have to have this. So now every brand has their own trade name also, trademark also, right? They have their own design registered, right? 
So now then the Gucci, when you talk about Gucci, so you have a bell kind of design that you can see, right? So now something that you see that pleases your mind or your eyes is first the category, but again, you need to understand that you only go for things that you have heard, right? So now other, if I talk about other aspects that can be related to very industry is that a fashion lawyer is required to assist also with providing full security, you know, it's just not a money making fee. Of course, fashion industry is, a, you know, I could say that it's a money making profession. Also, people earn a lot, but it's a struggle also, you know, it's not that that's the only glamorous world that you see from the eyes outdoor. The people are putting a lot of effort, you know, everybody's working day and night. It's just not the only glamorous thing that you see in the TV or you just see in the show that people are walking down the round wearing pretty sets of langa, jewelries, and a lot of makeup. And oh wow, and you see that, oh wow, she's looking so pretty. I mean, her langa is so beautiful. No, she's looking so gorgeous. So sometimes we pass on comments also, you know, because things are pleasing to our mind. But now again, you have issues also in the industry that I've discussed previously, whether there's a knockoff and how you can sort it down. You can have damages, you can file five injunctions also for that. So, you know, we have discussed about the foundations also. We have discussed about the Design Act, the Copyright Act. So now what happened also, you know, if I talk about the New York uh, senator, the Charles Sommer, he introduced a very innovative design protection and piracy protection that is JUPA in August. So now IDDPA is what? Actually, uh, they protect the designs in UK. This is something unique and original. So now when we know about fashion, it's not only concern or banned or born till India. It's a global phenomena, you know, global phenomena that actually it's turning out a lot of billions of dollars in, you know, turnover. People are earning a lot, you know, and, and this means that more and more individuals are, you know, in the firm, they're wanting, you know, they wanted to hire people, you know, because it's a very gigantic pike, you know, and they're jumping into the fray and uh, they try to lie the problem also with the shareholder. So, you know, I feel that not everyone has a talent and creativity to hold his or her own. So you need to, they try to find the easiest way to earn. And, you know, they the ramp up the sales and, you know, the revenue for most and is to flood the market with the copies of original fashion and design and the trends. So adding to the uh, complexity in the digital presence, I would say there's an online display of fashion clothing also. It happens, you know, we have like, Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra. So we, we we try to buy clothes online. We try to buy jewelry online because in the pandemic, nobody was supposed to move out. It was all shut down. It was all locked down. It was very boring. So what do the people do? They have no options except online. So now the online display of fashion clothing actually matters. So now it has become all too easy for everyone. You know, sometimes it happens when you try to buy something from Amazon or it happens with me also. Like I ordered uh, sometime I ordered, uh, suppose I ordered, I ordered, I remember I ordered a pair of white shirt from Mintra, but I actually realized when I received the uh, parcel, it was turned out to be something else. So I had to return the order. You have two options. Either you can return the order. And if the, if the order is completely different that you have ordered, you can ask for damages. If your phone, if you ordered a phone and if it comes your way, it is totally damaged. You can ask for the replacement or you can ask for the damages to a phone. So now what happened is that it has become all too very easy for anyone to check, you know, out whatever is trending, you know, uh, on the online medium, you know, in the way of fashion clothing and go ahead and purchase what they like on the website also simply by putting your item in the cart and going on the option of buy now. So now what happened, this brings consumers and fans to the fashion related, you know, websites and retail outlets talking, you know, copies of those very fashion designs, you know, at a fraction of the cost and original. So hence, you know, the, the world gets larger by the day. And so the, the pressure on the original brand is too much these days to make them best, you know. Setting up very stringent norms and rules and, you know, laws also is very important to ensure a very healthy growth for the fashion industry. So, you know, as a result of these fashion laws, they have been introduced. They have been working a lot. So fashion is the window of a social change. It's a modern idea that we try to bring. You know, first time fashion law was taught in 2008 by professor Suzanne Scandi in USA. So he was the one who is started, who started teaching fashion law first in UK. Right. So now I hope it's very clear right now what I'm trying to express about fashion law. So now moving ahead. So we have discussed till now, if I just recall myself, we've discussed about what is fashion law. 
then we discuss about fashion law in pandemic i have given you brief about the april law apple industries the case study we have discussed ritika private limited and the biba april industries you know we have discussed about the you know damages the you know legal remedies that a person can avail about the ip law the copyright law the design act you know what are the famous you know foundations in india we have discussed that also also what are the problem that exist you know right now and what is the concept of knockout so now i hope this you know it is very clear right now you know that fashion law also has a scope you know it's not that you just have to let go it right so it's something that you need to understand in a very oh, clear way so there were very famous judgments also in india that actually based on the fashion law there were a lot of issues also you know so what happened is that you know it's a bit because i i believe fashion law is still a very niche and a nascent practice area in the country you know the global interest you know the global interest in the is area was very initially generated after the establishment of the fashion law committee in the new york bar you know i told and so what happened again i am remembering something what happened there was uh, the case of you know uh, aditya mr aditya villa he was a fashion industry and the retail uh, limited was manish johar so in ka case tha what happened the case was that the plaintiff was you know asserted to be in the business of manufacturing and sales of wide range of fashion products globally ranging from the apparel to you know the footwear perfumes and the trademark of allen soli now it's a very famous brand you have bags and i've been using allen soli since quite long so you have bags you have designs you know you have shirts everything of allen soli so which was retained a copyright in the copyright act in 1957 so what happened was that you know it had been the acquisition you know Against the defendant that he used the label and marks of the plaintiff, counterfeit and copy, used the Asiatic attributes of the plaintiff, and trade in their own fashion products in a very manified manner, infringing the plaintiff's copyright and trademark right. So, comparing the marks, you know, of the plaintiff and defendant, it is found that the label is used by defendant was made with a purpose to deceive, you know, the public and con, you know, confuse the customer, which is being done nowadays a lot. so for handling over the counterfeited products the plant plainte for destruction so now you can see yourself so these are a lot of issues that are happening everywhere so it was held that the defendant was guilty of you know passing off and you know infringing the plainte framework and decree of permanent injunction was also granted against the defendant so now i hope it is very clear i tried my best to explain the concept of fashion law and what are the nitty gritties of the fashion industry how you can go and never feel yourself that okay you cannot do that because sometime it happens people come to me the student comes to me and they like ma'am we don't know anything about fashion law how to start so i told you very clearly you have to start from reading you know whenever you have interest on something you try to generate the interest and now there are a lot of law schools a lot of uh, you know universities that are often you know courses and if you have interest you can and see again google so you can just go type on google and read you know you can have fashion law journal write something if you have really interest because sometimes you need to come out of the traditional zone also you cannot just only stick to contract law tort law in in india in, or everywhere across the globe there are a lot of subjects we have you know uh, we have aviation laws also you know so we have to discuss about air space so now in a in a country the academics the education is so high that we want to give the best we want to devote time and we want to make sure that everything is taught to the students and to the young people you know they can just try to have an idea about it so i think with this i would like to end my concept and my presentation for today that is introduction to fashion law i hope everybody enjoyed the lecture of today so i had a great time with discussing with fashion law so thank you so much i would like to end myself my presentation right now thank you so much